we've got something interesting again. It's a Deal Extreme, or at least it was uh, ordered at Deal Extreme, one of these uh, USB 5 volt chargers. And it's supposed to be, or at least it says, it's a 5 volt 1 amp power supply. It is the lightest and cheapest thing I've ever seen. Like it's, it has this glossy but very scratchy outside and doesn't really fit together well and has no safety markings at all. So this is gonna be fun. And you just know it's the mark of quality when these connections are like this, this here. This is a solder blob that is like, they, they put too much solder in it and it kind of kind of fell off and didn't really solder it very well. And more in interestingly, uh, there's like a little piece of solder that I just kicked off. This was in the housing. This means that this is an immediate danger. Uh, if you would have dropped this and possibly like uh, the, the solder blob got kicked off the plastic and started wandering around here, it's a shorting hazard and just immediate fire hazard. So uh, we're obviously in for a treat. Something else that's interesting to note, now that I look at it, uh, it was kind of, kind of really easy to get in. This plastic piece that holds the pins in, it, it has these snap fittings that go into the main housing. So I bet you if I, if I just plug this into a socket and kind of, kind of put some force on it, I bet you this will separate. So just for fun, I, I didn't try this before. This is the first time I'm trying this. We're just going to put some force on this. <laughs> oh. Yeah, my YouTube channel is only three months old and already I can tell you this is going to be the worst power supply I've ever reviewed. Just to be serious for a moment here. Um, this kind of stuff happens all the time. You, you cannot account for people just being idiots. Even people just like this. This is a fairly large piece of plastic sticking out of a, out of a wall socket. It's going to happen that somebody is going to, uh, like maybe they plugged it into a wall socket near the ground and they, they kick their feet against it or they put a bag on it, snaps off, and it just immediately exposes these 230 volt badly soldered wires, uh, which can potentially snap off because this, this wire in particular here, it's, it's only barely on. Like I bet if I would wiggle this around four or five times, it will, it will come loose. So this is just a, a giant hazard. Just looking at the general layout here, uh, we can see uh, there's only one diode here. So it's half wave rectified goes into a very not no name capacitor. That's the first capacitor I've seen that doesn't even have a name on it. <laughs> it is 105C rated though. If I can get this on camera, maybe somebody knows the brand of this capacitor. It has like two, two things orbiting each other as, as the company symbol. Uh, this, this is what's called a uh, blocking oscillator design. No, it's not. No, it, it is actually feedback design. Uh, excuse me. Uh, what you have here is a diode transistor capacitor uh, feedback circuit. This is an oscillator, but it's kind of a kind of sort of voltage controlled oscillator that goes faster or slower. It, it has a fixed on time, uh, which is regulated by this capacitor and one of the resistors here. And then the diode transistor and capacitor are uh, go faster or slower with this optocoupler input, uh, which is regulated by a Zener diode and a resistor on the output. Then there's the transistor. There's a small coupling capacitor, a single output diode, and a very small, way too small for a one amp output, 220 microfarad uh, output capacitor, and that's it. So essentially, there's nothing on the bottom. So there is, oh, hey, there's a fuse here. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's essentially no filtering on the output. So uh, you can expect extremely bad uh, output ripple and uh, it's just lots of noise. There's no input filtering, so extremely bad input filtering. Although 
don't have facilities to measure that yet. Uh, this this is going to be all around crappy, and mm, I would be hard pressed to see this go to one amp because this this output diode this this looks like a half amp output diode. So yeah, let's see uh, how it performs. Uh, let's keep the thermal camera handy. All right, let's turn it on, see if it explodes. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can already see some very nice uh, spikes on the output. Anyway, it's, it's outputting 5.25 volts. Yeah, I think it's safe to start loading. Let's go to like uh, 100 milliamps. 115. It's holding up uh, pretty well, actually. So that's 600, 700 uh, millivolts ripple. Really bad. Uh, let me just pan over the camera real quick to show you. <laughs> that's that's how it looks. <laughs> like half an amp. Usually these power supplies don't actually go up to a full amp. They go up to maybe half an amp. And yeah, here we we pretty much see what usually happens. The voltage has sagged to uh, to just under five volts. And the the ripple has become really pronounced. Um, I'll pan over the camera again so you can see there's a definite like switching waveform going on there. Uh, it's not super stable. You can also see that in the in the screen capture, uh, the voltage is slowly rising. Uh, this is not a very well compensated uh, power supply. But as far as thermals go, it's quite okay. So let's uh, well let's let's see if it it goes any further. 2.7 watts, voltage sagging significantly, and the output ripple is just getting mad. Uh, the the oscilloscope is already seeing this. It's a 50 hertz uh, signal that you're seeing. So actually, the input voltage, uh, as it's rectified from the um, from the mains, it's put into the main capacitor, and that. The primary capacitor is just very small, so it, uh, it causes the input to sag, and it doesn't have very good uh, power supply rejection, so uh, it causes these ripples. Let's uh, try some more power. Output voltage is only 4.7 volts now, so most phones will actually not uh, try to pull more current. They most most modern phones they um, they actually sense. Uh, how much the voltage is sagging and adjust their charge rate based on that instead of just blindly trying to pull one amp or half an amp Yeah, and as as I pull more current the power isn't actually going up the power is only going down So this is as I as I kind of expected this is essentially a two and a half watt or 500 milliamp power supply or designed as such and the maximum current it seems to be like Maybe 700 milliamps. No, it's it's 655 milliamps. So that's it basically. So yeah, um, unfortunately, no explosions today. Uh, so yeah, at the end of the day, what what is there really to say about these kinds of power supplies? You you kind of know just by by feeling it. This this is there's just no kind of compliance. There's no filtering. It's not up to spec. It's uh, in this case actually dangerous. Um, there's a solder blob in there that could have easily not loose and uh, caused a short. And there's no fuse and no kind of input protection at all. There's not even output protection. There is probably not enough uh, clearance. Like if we if we take a look look at that circuit board, like here, there's just not enough primary secondary clearance. And even here, this is just not enough. 
uh, there's still solder mask there. there there's all kind of gunk that can get in there's no shielding there's no dust screening so any crap that gets in here that is slightly conductive like a, a piece of hair uh, oily hair is pretty conductive and can cause a primary secondary leak leakage current uh, that can kill you basically so this is this is just all around super bad super crappy don't don't buy this kind of stuff uh, especially like phone chargers there is just no need to save on these you you can go if if you're tight on cash you can go on a second hand site and buy like a brand name second hand phone charger they're like two bucks uh there's just it's so unnecessary and this is just plain dangerous anyway th thanks a lot to Heintje Put, who sent this in. See ya on Thursday. So today's video. So recently to we had the belated Secret Santa, and, and the person who got me made a little I made a fan controller that essentially and as you might connected be able to your motherboard on this side and to the fan on this side from, from one of my earlier videos. And it modifies a little speed signal. I had no idea he would do that. Fan how um, fan 